Hi everybody, and welcome back. I hope you found the chord theory and the rhythmic knowledge very easy to go through. Today we're talking about Logic's Arpeggiator. It's a MIDI plugin that generates arpeggios based on incoming MIDI notes. So an arpeggio is a succession of notes in a chord played one after the other in a pattern. So it's easy to go through for you because you have just turned in your four chord pattern. So I've got the four chords that we've created in the last video. And as we look at what we look at here within the arpeggiator, I think you'll find this very, very easy. And so the one thing we want to look at within the arpeggiator is the live note and note order section. First of all, we get the rate knob. And so let me just move this out of the way so you can see that. And that rate knob starts from one to one, half triplet, eighth note, and of course we're going to listen to these, eighth triplet, sixteenth note, and of course going through the rhythmic knowledge that you've gone through, hopefully that will make a lot of sense when we hear what we hear. So in the case of, of this particular exercise, we're going to keep it on one sixteenth. So the large white note order, in this particular case, these little buttons, the large white note order buttons, determine the order in which the notes of our pattern are played back, ascending, descending, ascending, descending, repeating the first and last note for random. And then we have the variation in octave range and version sliders. The variation slider, this here, is where the note order option having four variation increases the possibility exponentially. So we've got all of these different options, of course, and I've got the four variations of those options. And we also have the octave range slider, which increases the range of the arpeggio up to an octave, up to four octaves in this case, right? The grid mode is where I really have a lot of fun with this. And so I think you'll find that it, it, you'll also enjoy it a lot too. So in the case of the grid mode, you can customize each individual step in an arpeggio pattern using the arpeggio grid mode here. So if I click on the grid mode, you can see I've got kind of a little grid that's been written in. And of course, if I wanted to, I could change that in anything that I want. So let's just say that in this case, I don't want any of these on. I could just shut them off or turn them back on. There we go. The grid consists of 128 steps. And so to create different grooves, you can change the length of each step and tie together multiple steps. You can also control other parameters like changing each step velocity or cycle length of the pattern in grid mode. So in this case, the grid consists of 16 steps, as you can see here. If a step is turned on, like in this case, an arpeggiator note is played at the respected grid position. So let's just turn on some of these. Now I've just got this going on every other one, right? Let's listen to what happens here. Now again, my reference point in this particular case is the chord change that we had here. Let's listen to what happens as I'm in grid mode and I just alternate every other note. Let's listen to what that does here. If a step is turned off, the grid position is silent and perceived as a rest. So I'll just shut some of these off and let's just hear what happens. And you can hear this is the one of every chord that we created, right? Now, velocity length bars. Drag vertically to set the velocity for each active step. So if I wanted it louder or quieter, I could do that here. So let's just say we wanted to create a nice little movement or a ramp up maybe. And let's use a couple more steps here. You can do a lot of fun stuff with this, as you can see. Really easy. Nice little volume ramp. Drag 
the length bar towards the left to reduce the step, to the, reduce the length of the step. And so in this case, if I wanted it to just kind of pop, it would be a little more transient. I can do that too. And then maybe if I wanted it to be a longer at the end, just for, you know, a little more dynamics, I could do that. Let's listen to what happens. So I can drag to fixed positions of 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100%. But if I wanted to just get to something, you know, nice and set, you know, custom, I could just hold shift and drag to the step freely. Like this. Now that gets us where I'm over the phrase, as you can see here, right? Now that's going to take the place of those steps. And as you'll hear, get some really interesting effects. So that overlap, I think, is something really fun. Now, my favorite part about this is let me just go back to what we had before here. I'll drag this back so we can just get to one step. And let's lose our velocity ramp up. But let's talk about the chord on and off button. Turn on chord mode for each respective step, and you're going to hear that as we roll through, you're going to get the chord within that. <laughs> So when it encounters a chord step, it plays all notes currently in, latched or held, in the memory of that step. Now if you wanted to change the grid length that you could, of course, let's just say if you wanted to just get crazy, you know, make it whatever you wanted to, of course, you could make it anything that you wanted. In this case, I've just, for the purpose of our exercise, I've kept it at 16, but obviously you can see exactly what it could be. The pattern pop-up menu in this case now, if we wanted to, I could customize this or we could have certain presets. And I think many of you will find some of these presets are truly awesome. Um, some of these that I was messing with, you know, in some of the tracks here, as you can see, maybe potentially I could take this and as you hear the grid mode in this case, let's just... Eight. We've got eight steps in this case, right? Now let's say, for example, you wanted to have a chord. And we could just start messing around and get some really... And I don't know about you, but that to me is just a lot of fun. Very addicting, of course. So once I get started, I never want to stop. So as you can see here, going into some of their presets. I mean, you could have a lot of fun and then we can customize those presets with just the very simple, you know, settings that, that we've just talked about in this particular case. And so I've just called up one, of course, let me just call up another one here and you can kind of hear the difference. Same idea. You see how the velocity creates a, a very aggressive hit to your software instrument. So maybe we could change that velocity pattern and move that back just a little bit so it doesn't hit so hard. On top of that, what could we do? Well, we could tighten up every hit, maybe potentially drag over another hit as that chord will play through the next hit. A lot of fun. And so with that, I really do hope that you mess around with this. And as you can see here, this is utilizing the chord progression that we've come up with on the last video and, and what you've already turned into us. And so with the, this information, I think you'll find it very, very easy. And so let me just go back to what we had in the beginning. Again, we haven't really talked about the live and the different settings of what we can do within live. And so in this particular case, I'm just going to go to the first variation in one octave range. And we're just going to go to the up position. And I think that you'll find that this is, you know, really, really easy. Let me just play this through for you. So once again, this is just in the up position. Let's 
go to starting from your arpeggiation, starting from the fifth and moving down. So now our ascending, descending, or going up on our arpeggio and then going down on our arpeggio. Ascending, descending. And then we're looking at our randomizer. And then this one's really interesting because if you've got a controller, it's whatever note that you pick first this is going to make its arpeggiation. So if you wanted to start on the third first and then go to the fifth and then go to the root, you could do that, but you're going to need the controller for that. So with that said, in the particular exercise that we're looking at here, you've already inputted the notes. So as you can see, it could be a lot of fun. And now let's just change the variation real quick. And then I'm just going to go back and go through some of these rate changes as well on top of the variation. And I'm just going to go in this particular case, we'll just do the ascending or starting from the root up. We change the rate. change the octave range. I'll just go up here just a couple octaves. Let's just change, go up three octaves in this case. It's a lot of fun. And very quickly before we end here, I just want to show that we do have some presets up here on the top. And this is all within your user default. And in, within this menu up on the top, it's the same idea. We'll click in and we get to our grid mode. Maybe potentially if we wanted to customize this a little bit more, we could. But I think you'll find that if I was to call this up, and right now I'm using this as your chord, right? And this chord, I'm using this as a Rhodes. But what if I was to change this around? What if I was to use something maybe a little bit different? What if I was to process a guitar? What if I was to use a Moog or a retro synth or something like that? The sky's the limit. It could be anything. And so let me just kind of show you the difference. And so in this case, as I used my Rhodes, I'm going to change this out to my Moog or my retro synth. And remember, as we start talking here in the future about some of the synth parameters, in this case, what I'm looking for in my magic trick is my filter. And in time, you're going to find that within these settings of our arpeggiation, maybe potentially for some of you, this is the sound that you've been looking for. So again, I've got the simple grid mode happening. I've just got you know the arpeggiation rolling in this case. It's a pattern that I just picked um, from up here on the top, Groovy Cycle 5. I'm using the retro synth, nothing to it. And then the only parameter I'm worried about in this case is my filter. So let's listen here. that. I hope that's a lot of fun for you. I hope it helps many of you bring your chord changes to the next level. Of course, you may not necessarily want this for every aspect of your song, but this could be wonderful for a drop. It could be wonderful for a breakdown. I think many of you will find that it's, it's great to add to your projects. Let us know if you have any questions and uh, feel free to email me anytime if you need anything. Have fun. Take care, everybody.